So today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions of the Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors. I got the compact set which comes with 14 half pans and a brush. Um, I wanted this set because it's great for travel, it's small, it comes with a little watering cup and extra space for mixing so I thought it'd be great to take for on the go. I actually bought this set on eBay. It was $13 and at the time eBay had a special deal where if you spent $10 you got a $10 coupon so with tax I think I only paid 4 bucks for this which I think is a pretty good deal. Let's open it up. really like the plastic um, packaging instead of a metal one. It's lightweight and I don't know, it just looks really nice with like the gold lettering. Um, it's quite small, smaller than my hand. So let's open it up. unwrapped which was actually quite difficult they were pretty well wrapped um, let's talk about it first impressions um, what you can notice is do you hear how the pans are kind of jiggling in their spots they don't really stick down very well um, which can be annoying I would do a demonstration but I'm I'm afraid they'll all just fall out of their spots but what you can do is you can stick blue tack here and hopefully that would make them, you know, stay in their space a little better. I mean, imagine using a brush on this and it's just kind of jiggling all the time. It can be a little annoying. Um, even the pans in their little, the little cakes in the pans kind of fall out. But once you get some water in here, it'll stick down. Also, something else I've noticed is Specifically, these two um, watercolors, if you can see, the texture is kind of crumbly and not smooth like the others. Not sure how that will react with water and work on paper, but we'll see when I do a swatch test. So this is the brush it comes with. This is the number five Cotman brush. I added a little water to it since it was hard and crunchy. You know how brushes are when you get them out of the packaging. So it feels really soft. It's pretty tiny so I think if you are traveling and doing work and maybe you need bigger brushes you can always take those as extras but this is a great one to keep in the pan. Um, you can see in comparison to the watercolors how big the brush is. Um, I typically like to use a brush like this that has water. This is the Aqua Stroke brush. And as you can see, it even says the brush that adds water. <laughs> um, this one's brand new, so it's really clean. But the bristles are really soft, and yeah, I think it's a great brush. Comes in a few sizes and Obviously it won't fit in here, but you can take it as extra if you're traveling and on the go. Another neat feature about this product and why I really wanted it was it comes with this little cup for holding water. You attach it to the side on either side, this side or this side, which is great if you're a righty or a lefty. And then this area pulls out 
which gives you more ability to mix more colors in addition to the really nice spaces up top. And you can also put your thumb here and paint like it's a palette. It's really lightweight, really comfortable, and this would be great for on plein air paintings and just on the go. So I think this is a really great idea and I love the look of it. Lastly, before I get into the swatching, I wanted to talk about the permanence and light fastness. So as you can see on this one, the packaging says it has a permanence of A, but on this one, it has permanence of AA. So according to the website, an AA is their highest level of permanence. That means excellent permanence. An A is just permanent. So all the colors have an A, but only some have AA, which are Chinese white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. Now, in terms of light fastness, this one doesn't give me any information but the yellow ochre says it has a light fastness of one. One, according to their website, is the highest light fastness. They go up to a five, I believe, and um, the ones with a light fastness of one are, again, the ones with the best permanence, Chinese white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, but some have a light fastness of two, like cerulean blue or purple lake, and the ones with a light fastness of one are Viridian Hue and Ultramarine. So that's just something to take note of if that's something that's important to you. So here are my list of swatches, bring it a little closer so you can see them. I think they all look really good. Um, I definitely have to play with them more to see how I like the paints. I think a swatch sheet is just good to obviously see how the colors look, not in a pan, but actually on paper. Um, I'm really intrigued by Purple Lake, it's such an interesting color. It reminds me of magenta from my Lyra palette, but with a little more purple. So that's a really interesting color I've never seen before. So I wanted to do a quick swatch comparison between this palette and some other watercolor palettes I have. I have this Reeves one. It's many years old and I don't think they sell it like this anymore, but I know they have tubes. Um, I also have this Lyra one, Lyra one, so they're all pretty old. I know you can find this on Amazon still for 10 bucks, maybe a little bit more. And lastly, I have my, um, not expensive palette, but more expensive than these. This one you can find on Amazon right now for $27. I paid 22, I got it on a special sale, but this one I like a lot. This one's really great, and these ones are a little more chalky versus this one is much smoother. So I'm gonna swatch green from the Windsor & Newton palette. Really smooth, really nice. Now for my Reeves palette. from my Lyra palette. And lastly, my Lucas palette.
So here's my swatch sheet comparison of the Windsor Newton, Reeves, Lyra, and Lucas watercolors. I tried to compare the colors that match the best, but as you can see, it's not perfect. Um, all in all, I think the Windsor Newton performed really well. They look really, really smooth, full coverage, lay down. Um, they feel smooth. These ones I mentioned, the Reeves and Lyra feel chalky, so these ones feel really nice on the paper. This is Canson watercolor paper, by the way. Um, ignore that little spot on the yellow, a little bit of blue got in there, so other than that, it was really, really smooth. Um, I'm actually very impressed with the Windsor & Newton blue compared to the other blues. Uh, I thought the Lucas blue would be the best, but it actually still shows a bit of the graininess and texture of the paper, whereas the Windsor & Newton looks very, very smooth. So I definitely have to play with these watercolors a bit more, try them out in a painting, and see how I like them. But I hope this video has been helpful, and if you do decide to buy the palette or if you have the palette, let me know in the comment section below. Hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.